ductility and sheer talent, Sterling is the greatest racing driver Britain has ever produced. In his 16-year career, he did 529 races and won 212 of them. He'd race anything. Formula One, Formula Two, sports cars, GTs and saloons. They called him Mr. Motor Racing. Brands Hatch really comes into its own on bank holidays. He started winning as a teenager in Formula 3 Coopers and moved on to Formula 2 with HWM. The patriotic Moss wanted to race only British cars, but the lack of a suitable Formula 1 car forced him to buy an Italian Maserati and paint it green. He beat the works cars, so Maserati hired him to lead their team. And in the Italian Grand Prix, until an oil pipe broke, he'd been leading even Fangio. So Mercedes boss Alfred Neubauer hired him as number two to Fangio. Sterling spent the 1955 season following in the great man's wheel tracks until an historic moment at entry in the British Grand Prix. Sterling beat Fangio that day to become the first British driver to win his home Grand Prix. But at Goodwood on Easter Monday 1962, fighting back after a long pit stop, Sterling had the shocking and still unexplained accident that ended his professional career. He nearly died, and after a long convalescence, announced his retirement. I'm not sure if you're there, Rob, but hello and welcome to everyone who joins us for our live race tribute tonight for the... I can't, Rob, you're just, we're live now on the internet. Um, so we've got Rob King and myself are just introducing our racing. Sorry, we're a little bit delayed in getting going with this, but this is a very, um, how do you say, a lately organised uh, tribute to... Uh, certainly our fans were, one of, we were big fans of Sterling Moss and it was sad to wake up this morning to the news of the passing of the late greats or Ster Sterling Moss so this was something we put together today around a track that he started his racing career way back when um, and I believe his last race was here he had a, an accident that um, ended his career in effect but he did of course make a couple of um, public appearances around good with the festival of speed and the revival and such but anyway we decided to throw on a race we've got a couple of drivers that came out tonight um as we're looking at levant in into the into the gravel trap already but rob can you see what i'm seeing on the screen because this is all very fancy new technology tonight well let me f fix that for you straight away <laughs> We had. Uh, it is a shame because everyone has to now all of a sudden come to the harsh reality that it's me and you they have to put up with for this Rob <laughs> I can just see them, the, the viewer numbers are just dropping off sharply as everyone decides to go watch another episode of Tiger Kings but hopefully we do manage to get Leo back in which would be great but um yeah, this is something we, we've thrown together and uh, we've 22 drivers, I believe, signed up now for this. So we'll see um, if we can get a bit of racing out of them tonight. These things are an absolute handful. I tried it earlier on myself 
I gave up after a couple of laps. Just keeping it in a straight line is next to impossible, but you're a big fan of Goodwood, Rob. That's even the worst, that's even worse news for everyone who's out there. They can't even hear Rob, they can just hear, hear me. <laughs> you keep rambling on, I'll get a fix up, don't worry about that. This you've got the works Ferrari teams and stuff, and hugely powerful 4.4 litre V12s. And um, and Mars and Jenkinson, when they uh took on this, this challenge, they, they didn't know the roads, although he'd done the, the race, it's a thousand miles long, so you're not going to remember the, uh, the, the the track. So he prepared for months and months and months in road cars on the public roads, and they essentially invented pace notes. So uh, Dennis Jenkinson had a big scroll of paper um, and they took notes down over every single corner, every town, every village, you know, which bits were flat, which were, uh, you know, part throttle, where were the blind crests, all that kind of stuff, where were the cattle grids, um, potholes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they refined it over a period of months, rode off a couple of uh, 300 SL road cars in the process and and then uh, Jenkinson built this homemade uh, kind of roller scroll thing where with a little perspex window and he rolled the notes as they went along. And the thing was so loud inside this 300 SLR that they couldn't talk so they also had to develop uh, hand signals. Um, there's a fantastic article about this in um, Motorsport magazine so if you ever get the chance, check it out, it's amazing. Um, I'm just gonna yeah, ask Rob, are you reading yeah. that article right now? Because I think people just came in. We only got your audio working in the middle of that, but it did oh, sound right. like you've no, been no, practicing that all day. <laughs> no, 
No, but I have read it a couple of times. It's a, it's fantastic. Like if you get, if you look it up. You, you can get it. They've reprinted it a few times. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, as we ride on board with Mark O'Rourke here, who's absolutely flying. Um, I was actually thinking about this earlier on today that uh, this car, this track, is probably going to be really <laughs> suited to some of the guys who are who are fairly handy at drifting because it's it's not your typical style of, of circuit racing, driving these type of cars around this type of track. It's it's very, very four-wheel, kind of drifty stuff. Um, not a lot of grip, way too much power, um, and not a lot of the guys are going to be used to that. So um, I think we sh- could see some good stuff from the likes of Marco Rock, who um, I was Willie Pigeon just, uh, I was about to congratulate him on his spectacular four-wheel drift through St. Mary's there. Um, but he just got a bit wrong at last minute. But uh, yeah, so anyway, I think Mark O'Rourke and some of those guys who are uh, into the drifting, I think, could do really well here. Anyway, I was banging on about um, the Mille Miglia race. So they had to develop these hand signals because of the, you know, the car was so noisy. Um, and they were doing, I think they were topping out at 100 and, 170 or 180 miles an hour on public roads. Which is just incredible, like, um, and they managed to. I think their average speed at the end of a thousand miles was ninety-nine miles an hour, which is mind-boggling. It's crazy. I just we're right here with Brian McManus, but I think is it time for us to uh, kick off our qualifying, Rob? What do you think? Absolutely. I thought we were in qualifying, so yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Let me just see if we've got everybody's. Uh, I think we just put him straight into a race now and just let him... Let just him go, go straight for it. For it. Right, for well, us, anyway, yeah. what we'll do is we'll, we'll kick it on. Um, for everyone who's watching, this is the way a set of cost, course it works for anyone who doesn't know. So you basically got this menu on the left-hand side, and then it's as simple as this. You just hit your steering wheel, and as you into the race, as we watch the drivers start out into 10 minutes of qualifying here around the Goodwood circuit. Have you uh, driven around the Goodwood circuit then, Rob? No, I Does haven't. Is that you? No, no okay. It's on, it's on the bucket list, all right. That and the Nurburgring. Well, we'll see. Yeah, you can do a track day. You can do a track day at Goodwood, I think. Um, what they have is. For no- <laughs> I think absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, for anyone who's joined in and wondering what's going on and why this is so higgledy-piggledy, don't forget, everyone is locked up in Dublin. You can't forget that, really, that we're all locked up in, indoors. But all of these drivers are sitting at home on their own simulators right now. And usually, we broadcast these live from Mondello in Suite 2. But um, by hook or by crook, we were able to plug in all of this stuff. And Rob, are you sitting at home in your garage right now, or where are you? No, I'm, I'm sitting at home on my couch, looking at this on my phone, talking into my phone, um, drinking a <laughs> bottle of beer, having it's a brilliant. square of chocolate. All right, well, yeah. I'm having a, an Easter egg here, a bottle of Heineken, as we watch Keith Dempsey going through on, to start his qualifying lap. So, 10 minutes of qualifying here. It's unfortunate we didn't actually get Leo on, because it would have been a bit of crack tonight. Um, but it is great yeah, to see everyone really out racing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Leo's got all the info on, on you know, on the circuit, the, the the drivers, and it's uh, yeah. Um, you probably missed the bit where we were saying you're you're unfortunately you you've not got the B team, you've not got the C team. You're down to the D or E team here. I'm afraid with myself. Are we even now. a team, Rob? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> not really. But it's, Keith's um, got a bit of work cut out from here. So just looking at the times, um, and he isn't going to have it all his own way because Adam Dowling is putting in some cracking laps, as is Evan Walsh. And there's a couple other quick racers out here, and with a 10 lap race, this is all about you get it wrong once around here, and you're off into the shrubs, and that's the end of you, really. Yeah, you can be into the infield in the uh, in the hay, and um, it can take a long time to get out. There's, there's very, very little grip on the grass. Um, it's actually, I'm really gutted I'm not racing in this because this is one of the few tracks that I don't completely. You actually had a shot. At. No, not at all. But like, I'm, I'm less bad at this than I am at most of the other stuff. So um, this is this is kind of my era of, of cars and tracks that I really love. So um, yeah, I would have been mad into this. But anyway, um, I think you're dead right about Keith. I think he could. I, you know, I was going to say he'll surprise us and, and come out of ball. It wouldn't surprise us if he was on ball. 
But um, I think he is going to have a harder time than normal. Where is he right now? He's, oh, he's into the 114s already. Right, OK. Mm-hmm. So I think we are going to have him on there, um, on pole. But yeah, Adam Dowling not too far behind. Well, I'll say that he's, he's two and a bit seconds off uh, at the minute. But I think he has been, and Evan has, Evan Walsh has been into the 114s as well. As we see some going like Just to put that in context, I was rocking around here earlier on thinking I was a legend at 122s. Like, one <laughs> four, like just, just for everyone who is, is looking at this as well, they, they can do full setup. So I take it, you know, Keat is out on a soft set of slicks and has got that card dialed in, as does everyone else. But usually we run fixed setups. So it's an even playing field for everyone. But... We didn't get time for that today. But, um, yeah, because you would have, um, as, as well as, sorry to cut a question, Al, you, you'd have, obviously you'd have different levels of ability in terms of driving, um, you'd also have different levels of ability in how you set up a car, um, a virtual race car as well. And, and Keith is extremely good at it and, and, and knows what to do very, very quickly, uh, where, whereas others would be uh, less good at it and um, would just go with the base setup that the car comes with and one would be at a disadvantage because of that. You're being very polite there, the way you're wording that. Less good at it. Um, <laughs> there is, of course, in the background of this, uh, another chat group going on. So we use a driver's voice server, if you put it that way, where all the drivers can talk to each other. And um, if anyone's been tuning in to watch any of our TCO racing, let's put it this way, we could not broadcast that driver's chat publicly. I mean, one or two drivers got a little rap on the knuckle after the last race. But they're all... Okay, oh... Big moment for Adam there. Now watch this, and that's it. Um, but they're all able to talk to each other and say, you know, come on fast or blah blah blah. But often, I would say this is going to turn into a bit of a, a show now. All right, but um, so the drivers can't communicate between themselves. I think that would be great if they had that modern day, especially in F1. What do you reckon, Rob? <laughs> yeah, and we could all hear it. I know they did the team radios and all that stuff, but driver to driver would be absolutely classic. How far away, Niall, this is an off the cuff question, from being able to, uh, with augmented reality or whatever it may be, what we want to call it, when there's an F1 race on, how far away are we from being able to take part in that actual race in our own sim with the real drivers as it happens? And I you mean, actually I don't do mean that them. at the moment with um, Formula I mean, E. You can you can race on the same track, uh, and it just downloads the telemetry onto your PC of where the other cars are. But of course, you just show up as a as a kind of ghost car on the track, so you can, you know, you're not going to crash into anyone or do anything like that. But definitely, I'd say, when will we be seeing that in F1? I've not heard anything, but I'm sure. If you and I are talking about it, Rob, it's already underway. And it's probably all down to monies and commercials and licenses at this stage. Yeah. Um, not too far in the distant future, anyway. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if you if you see it this year, because the way things are going with all of this COVID-19 stuff, will we get to see any racing this year? Is the question on everyone's mind. Um, and of course, everybody is entertaining themselves um, at present, and we're quite busy with it as well, trying to keep everyone. Uh, with the latest tech and that but everyone is kind of watching with one eye and sitting up a little bit at the moment to all of this sim race and stuff because there's a lot of big names coming out of the woodwork and joining some of these races and um, as Keith goes will he hold that one he regathered up ah anyway so we've two and a half minutes but um yeah it's coming along like you if you think about the last two years since we started started into this Rob and bringing it out to Mondello and doing all that it's come such a long way isn't it really has yeah um, and and especially as you said with the whole COVID-19 thing it's it's had a, a huge surge in in popularity and, and, and demand um, because there is no real racing on uh, and because people are at home and the uh, you know, the people who are into motorsport and usually would be racing or rallying or drifting or whatever it is, we can't do it. Um, what's the next best thing? Next best thing? Sim racing. Um, so, yeah, hugely popular at the moment and um, a lot of people getting into it, which is fantastic to see. 
We'll stop um, all the plugging for our own <laughs> our own needs, but it is <laughs> it is a great time to uh, to get to get into this and um, like you know tonight is all about Sterling Moss in in one sense in you know a lot of these drivers that are on. I met the man once or twice. I won't say I had a conversation with him. I got I got a picture, and uh, you know I was lucky enough to to um, to get to Goodwood a few times and and just basically hang out. And of course, Sterling would always be there. I don't think he was there since 2006 onwards. Um, after he picked up that uh, picked up a nasty chest infection, I think it was when he was off in Asia at one time. Never really recovered from that. But hit a right old age of 90 anyway. Yeah, I was chatting to my dad earlier on uh, today, and he's um, my dad is his, his, his number one fan. And, uh, oh, really? You know, Mr. Daddy King? Lifelong, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's met him three times, I think. And uh, he said the first time he met him, he was <laughs> he, unlike my dad now, he said he, he basically couldn't string a sentence together to, to ask him anything. <laughs> but uh, the last time I think he met him, he was actually at um, I think it was Prescott's hill climb in England and right. he was then uh, with the Acuria Koss um, oh, it was it probably a D-type Jag and the whole Acuria Koss uh, 19 kind of 60s bus transporter thing all converted and I don't know did he get to go up the hill with him or not I can't remember I think he might have done but uh, if he did then uh, life goal I'd say right up there with probably my my mom and me and my children uh, me and my sister being born I would say in his house. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't like to ask him which one he'd pick out of that bunch but I, <laughs> um yeah when I met him he was uh it was a one way conversation like that. Um obviously for me uh I wouldn't probably know as much about his racing as your dad but certainly you know he had that presence about him that you knew you were in uh, you were in the company of someone that was had seen it all as the checker flag comes out and qualifying that's Keith Dempsey we had high hopes here of Evan Walsh I'm not sure he's not even shown on the board at the moment so he must be having some issues that's a 114 yeah. to dead for Keith as he now just decides to practice <laughs> ever the professional he's just practicing his uh, race starts now but it's a two minute countdown to the grid so Interesting enough, I was looking earlier on, it's three wide uh, on the grid, so they're not starting two by two, Rob, so this is going to be an absolute show and a half into turn one. Yeah, it should be good, because it's, it's fast now, all the way, um, I, I'm not up to speed on the corner names, but to be honest, but it's, Madwick, it's a really, first really corner, yeah. fast flying, yeah, yeah, it's, so the, the, the race to the first corner, it's, it's probably just a dab on the brakes and a big lift, and then you turn it in and back on the power kind of thing, and it's quick all the way through for another two corners before you're really on the brakes hard. Um, and these are not slow cars. So this is the the 300 SLR, which is like the race version of the, the 300 SL, the Gullwing, you know, uh, Mercedes, which is, you know, hugely iconic and, and hugely valuable. Um, it's a, what is it? A three litre straight eight, eight cylinder. Um, so really long engine. And one of the, I think it was, I think it was the first ever car to be fuel injected, I think, and Bosch fuel injection. Um, what else did they have? They had some other cool stuff like inboard disc brakes and stuff like that that were uh, um, mounted in, uh, inside right by the by the rear diff and, and cool stuff like that. So 300 and, 310 or 320 horsepower, something like that. Uh, do 170 miles an hour, 180 miles now, an hour. Rob, so here's cooking. a challenge. I am on the grid. So oh, this geez. could be you interesting. Drive. This could be interesting. <laughs> no. Um, so... Hadn't even thought about this, one, but it's been so long since we've done a, a set of course race. Of course, the broadcast car goes onto the grid, so I'm going to have to figure that one out in a sec. But anyway, <laughs> some people with extra fancy lights, setups here, flashing the lights and all of that. But we'll see. I say it's about one minute countdown to lights out. So you talk us through into turn one while I try my best to get that car off the grid because we'll never live that down. <laughs> they come around after completing okay, lap one. Lights, lights are about to go on, so you're going to get six lights going on uh, and then when the lights go out um, it's uh, go 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 all the lights are on and uh, it and we're off so as soon as we go, we get my best back, folks. We go. on board with Keith Dempsey now I ever the pro. Good lead into the first corner Jordan Kelly into second place straight away so let's it's Jordan Kelly from 
Ivan Conroy yeah. and then Ooh. Adam Dowling. So everyone threw clean. I, geez, I wouldn't have put money onto that at the start, but Keith on an absolute flyer away. Of course, Cole tires out. So let's watch this. Now, Jordan Quelly, quick as you can get in sim racing as well. So he's been putting in a lot of impressive runs recently, especially in the TCR, getting third place. To be right on board with Keith Dempsey. This is true, Levant. So the car, very screaming through here. It's driving this early on. If you get it wrong into this corner, it's just good luck. To then the Levant straight. And you can not really straight at all. So this it's is not a really straight, yeah. Bit Getting on the brakes here, you're kind of trying to make a straight line out of these uh, kind of curves here, change down a gear, and then it's a weird line uh, through woodcut. Trying not to get onto the curb as you get back onto the power, and then you're into the uh, into the chicane. And again, as you come out of the chicane, they're really easy to get it wrong. Get a wheel up on the curb, and the thing is going completely sideways and fires you off into the pit wall on the left hand side. Um. So, who have we got? So, we still keep Dempsey, Jordan Kelly, Adam Dowling. Uh, Ivan Conroy is it Ian Conroy who's racing the legends? Not sure, but uh, Ivan is it Brian McManus, uh, O'Shea, Pat Masterson, um, Jan Montero, and Marco Rui. Oh, oh, sure. Have we got Have we got Leo Nolte there? I can hear something oh, in the dude. background. Can you hear me? Aha! Hey! <laughs> Instantly, we've gone from absolute amateur to mediocre to pro. So we can I'm hear not sure about that, guys. <laughs> Hold on, I, I, can, I can kill that for you. Uh, I've been consuming wine and watching uh, far more. <laughs> far nicer thing to do. I was uh, I thought I thought I had my feet up for the night. I'll put the shoes back on. Well, instantly, see, this see. we're on lap two here, Leo. I don't know how you're joining us, whether it's over YouTube or but where are you? Are you on the couch with the slippers on and the glass in hand? Oh no, I'm on the bank on the outside of uh, Madrick here, actually at Goodwood. <laughs> <laughs> Dedication. No, no, hold on a minute. It was just so realistic. I thought I was. No, uh, I, I'm, I'm a, a just I can uh, see like exactly like what happened else. now. He, he's, uh, he's, he's turned on the live stream. We've seen us two uh, ham fisted oafs having a go at this and gone, Jesus. Well, Christ, I, I was devastated, Rob. You were so, like, you were telling, like, some type of lifelong story that you always want to tell about Sterling Moss and no one could hear you. You're gonna to have to say that whole thing again. I got I got I got the tail end very impressed. I would say I, I take off my anorak hand it over to Rob. But I actually I I, 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 I there was nothing else on the comedy channel so I tuned in. That's not true actually I thought it was really good. Uh it's great to watch but these cars I I have no idea how I got on here by the way so log out or but I was in the driver's shaft and they just can't believe how hard these cars are to drive and it's quite realistic because if you watch uh, any of the Goodwood streams, and there are some fantastic ones, you might use the steering wheel for the initial turn-in, but that's about it. Throttle to steer the car after that. Oh, and they're a bit like this big, massive steering wheel, and uh, like like a truck. Oh. And then once you get the car turned in, it's just throttle, throttle, and Keith seems fantastic here, uh, initially at least, you know. But uh, I think practice, practice, a bit like any sim racing. But it's a great concept on a sad day. Yeah, it, it is. It's a, it's, it's a difficult, as you said, it's a really difficult car to drive and it, it's not an easy track at all. It's not like modern racing. Um, it's, it's all kind of four-wheel drifty, slidey, tippy-toe stuff and uh, great crack. Um, requires really good car control. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah. who are you on board with here? Niall, who's this person? I, I have no is. idea. It's Mark 1 Mano. So, uh, fair play to Mark 1 Mano for getting through all of our pre-driver briefing stuff that you have to have your name on the car <laughs> but uh we'll just call him mano mark one mano so there you are um but let's run down through so key to mc absolutely and to give a little bit more insight to how impressed this i don't know where, where he's getting this from but i was talking to keith earlier on and he was not on his sim when i was talking to him practicing this in fact he was on an easter egg hunt so he's just managed to jump onto this somehow and that'll just give you an idea of how far in front he is at the moment jordan kelly is not a man to be sniffed at in terms of pulling out five seconds over four laps jordan very very quick on the same very very quick in a v as well um maybe a little bit more track knowledge for keith I'm not sure around here but then you have ivan connery going really really well as well in the background but it's just iconic to see these cars, guys, isn't it? Going around Goodwood. It's cool. 
let's head back down the field. Where's the close battles now? How's uh, how's Mark O'Rourke and Hedeman getting on? Are they, are it's fairly close? spread out at the moment. It's a bit, isn't it? Yeah, Pop Masters and yeah. it is. And tell some of them to slow down so we can have a bit of a race to watch. Yeah, I think we might have to. <laughs> We've a couple of new names in here that we haven't had before. So there's Willie Pigeon, William Pigeon, dicing away with AC16. No idea who AC16 is, but they're having a great old dice there. So let's ride on board here and see how this all ends in tears, perhaps. So AC16 sounds like a fighter jet. Uh, Willie Pigeon, I think. I'm hoping that uh, it's with us a few years back at Mandelo. A really, really good character. Uh, I know he was talking to you guys at one of the shows because you messaged me and asked did I know him. Great guy, quick driver, but great fun, a great addition to class back in the days. So great to see Willie Pigeon going well and inside the top 10 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going very well. Um, but a little bit wide there. There's a the commentator's course for, for Willie. That's his moment. Down he goes. <laughs> He's still hanging on to it. It's, uh, it's, it's great to have this on the day. I suppose that's the beauty of virtual sports or esports. Is uh, we all got the news this morning about Sterling Moss, and as a lot of people said, we come. And it, it, in turn, in one way, it's not particularly sad because what a life! Uh, he lived to ninety years old. He was brilliant uh, all the way through it. Uh, completely active, a gentleman in and out of the car, and uh, a life definitely fully lived. We've got somebody rotating there. That's Pigeon, is it? It was, yeah. yeah. I said, I said, it's <laughs> tough. I, I, I'd save him the uh, the embarrassment of that one. It's a first race out for for Willie. I think it is the same uh, Willie you're talking about there because he. He was on to me and he had a little bit of background history for racing in Mondello. But talk us through um, a little bit more about Sterling Moss and what your fond memories are, I suppose, Leo, and what, yeah, what's your background? You've obviously, you've obviously oh, met yeah. him a few times, Leo. <laughs> During the war. No, no. Uh, <laughs> well, chaps. He's, uh, I'm like Uncle Albert here. Uh, no, I, the only time I saw him, uh, I saw some demos. I raced in the Phoenix Park in early there with Dad. And uh, he was in a Chevron, a small, a small Chevron, and uh, he ended up in a really good race with uh, Dickie Atwood, famous, famous Porsche driver, who was in a 917, a real widow maker Porsche, which would have been way quicker, but it drizzled rain, and uh, Sterling Moss's door was, was flapping open slightly. But uh, I'll, I'll plug my own YouTube channel here, the motorsport.ie YouTube channel. It's got some stuff, but, and one of them is some uh, home video footage of Sterling Moss in the Phoenix Park that weekend. And he was actually working on the car himself and chatting away and chatting to everybody. Away. Yeah, yeah, absolute. No, no, uh, no airs or grace at all, which is fantastic. The other one is that if you read any of his books, I think I'll get the name wrong here, but it was the complete racing driver, I, I, Dennis Jenkinson, I think, wrote uh, some of it. And while they were doing the Mille Miglia in this Mercedes that we're watching now, it was an electrical problem. And Moss asked Jenks, co driver, to drive the car between stages. And he was driving it relatively quickly, well over 100 miles an hour. And Moss was upside down in the passenger trying to fix the electrical problem with his head where his feet should be. And uh, some Italian in Fiat uh, 1100, full of red wine, pulled out in front of them in the distance. <laughs> and uh, and they locked up for ages and ages. Jenkinson said he heard this really sharp voice from the footwell going, Are we going to hit it, Dennis? <laughs> so I, I, obviously, uh, very calm controlled when he was sitting upside down. Three figures in one of these cars, but there are there are loads of stories. They all come out. The, the, I wouldn't say the good thing about him passing, but uh, some of the press already today, some of the stories, some of the tributes, absolutely wonderful about Sterling Moss, you know. But uh, the, the, the best Irish story is that the the Roy Keane one. I'm not sure if you heard that today, but Roy Keane, the footballer, yeah. his father was uh, was Morris Keane, a real Corkman, proud Corkman, and he was known as Mossy or Moss. And uh, whether it's true or not, the story goes that when Roy was playing for Man United and was earning quite a lot of money, he would send bundles of cash back to his dad, to Massey in Cork. And he became famous for trying to trying to spend this sterling in bars and wherever else to Cork City, you know. And as a result, he earned himself the nickname Sterling Moss around Cork City. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, irreverent today, I suppose, but it's a good Irish story. Anyway, back to the race. It's uh, keep them... We get used to saying this, don't we, guys? Keith Dempsey, is he becoming the sim master? He's yeah, he is. It, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the TCO race we had at Brands Hatch, but at the end of it, uh, Jack was interviewing him. And this is great coming here. Let's stick with this. Oh! That's oh, rolling just around. I was about to, <laughs> just about to say, it's so realistic in the, in the way that the cars are just 
four wheel drifting around the uh, round Levant there, and uh, not uh, Madrid, isn't it? And uh, it's exactly how it looks in real life. It's fantastic. Well, I was going to say, key, key one boat races. You were on the second, uh, so feature race from uh, the back of the grid, almost coming up through. <laughs> Turned around in the interview and said, "I'm not really getting on with these cars. I don't like driving them." And I think that just, yeah. <laughs> that just kind of summed it all up. Um, but there is an awful lot of high quality uh, sim racing, as we call it now at the moment, going on. I don't think this is more of a a showcase, I suppose, and a tribute to Sterling Moss. They hadn't much practice out. A lot of these people just sitting into the car for the first time today and having a go. But certainly on iRacing and with the um, TCR cars, uh, it's getting very, very competitive and very, very realistic as well. Yeah, I one, we're having a, yeah, a cracking race there, up to 8th place, he was started in the last, I think, um, so he's doing really well. He's going really well, yeah. Yeah, if you're inside the top 10 in one of these races, you're doing well. Just to carry on from what I was saying about the standard, we know we've got now got world-leading drivers in this, and uh, I suppose the, the pandemic that's going around at the moment has put the spotlight firmly on, on uh, virtual racing. You guys are a little bit shy about blowing your own trumpet because it's your business and, and you don't <laughs> want to do it, but, but I know, uh, I, I don't know because I've seen the port that's given to people that purchase rigs from you and uh, I've benefited from being able to drop in previous times have a go and uh, I'm absolutely brutal at driving these but uh, I do think that uh, you know I watched Formula 1 drivers the Legend series the other night and a couple of mates of mine say it's like the real thing it was close enough to get me excited you know uh, I do think that uh, the F1 drivers are doing it we're doing it anyway keep in touch it's a good thing to be doing and now the fact there are leagues everywhere and Ireland bit like 1970s with the Formula Fords crews of Derek Daly and David Kennedy, Bernard Devaney and Michael Rowe. We've got world leading drivers racing with us in the VRA and that's a really good thing and you can join them. You know, get in touch with Digital Motorsport and, and, and get a quote, get a bit of finance. I don't mind pushing it. I know you two guys are probably ah, going you're right. you're right right now. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, seriously, you know, it's the way to go and it's the way to go at the moment. Put you, even if you're a career racing driver, put your career on hold and become a racing driver for a couple of months, you know. It's a good thing to do. It's also good for you when you get back in the car. It's good for the mindset. It's good for your driving. You know, it's, it's the, everybody's doing it, you know. Plus, you've got the best guys to, to, to aim for. If you're racing against Keith Dempsey, if you get anywhere near Keith Dempsey, you've got to be handy enough, you know. Yeah. You're dead right. And, and you know, in, in running, there's, we've got Craig Green, who's, who's racing with us. Um, in drifting, you've got James Dean and Connor Shanahan and all these guys. And you can just come on and, like, we yeah uh, we ran a with the uh, drift games a, a virtual drift games bash there the other week. It was the best crack ever. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Live stream for like two hours. Yeah. Um, and that's just going out and having having great crack and just drifting around three separate tracks on Mondello uh, with a load of pro drivers and uh, all having the crack and uh, chatting to each other um, in in the middle of this global pandemic, which has everybody uh, rightly so down in the dumps. Um, and it's well, a, it's a positive thing, you know. It's a very positive thing for a professional. Or people that have aspirations to be a career racing driver because you can't go out and play football realistically, you know, you've got to, be, everyone is limited, but we're, you know, racing drivers are not that limited. And you mentioned Craig Breen there, you know, a WRC class, world class driver. He's not he's magnanimous about the whole thing, you know, he's quite humble saying I'm way off the pace, so elbows out tonight, let's go race. Great to see. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Matt Griffin, I have a slight involvement with uh, CJJ and Matt's running the CJJ driver program. And he started sim racing and Matt said to me, Leo, these sim guys are incredibly quick. You know, he's just, I'm not yeah. up there, nowhere near them. And Matt's a world-class driver. Can't get near some yeah. of the sim racers, you know? This yeah, is I going think... to be what we've all wanted to see now, because the drivers weren't expecting this. So I'm sure in the driver's chat, they're all going crazy. We've actually reversed the grid. So <laughs> 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 while we were all talking, it was Keith Dempsey. Uh, I think it was Jordan Kelly in the end from Adam Dowling was your top three. But this is the one I wanted to see now. So this is going to be... Keith trying to come up through the field, Adam trying to come up through the field, and me trying to get a car off the grid before it all goes wrong. So we're going to see a little bit of cameras flicking around at the beginning. Um, that's just while Niall tries to get that car off the grid uh, without everybody crashing into him. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about there. So bear with us, we'll be back with the action now. So Ronan Hedeman in the lead into the first Come on, Ronan. Cars on the grass. Who we got in second? Montero and Damien McMullen in third place. Good man, oh, Damien. Spinning in the oh, background. Good man, let's ride on board with Damien McMullen here. 
Damien has awesome. been sim racing with us from the very start as Jamantaria gets up onto the grass and there's an accident straight oh, away. Which brings Mike Manus up into the field with Pat Masterson behind. So this is what we want to see. Hederman is way out in front now. Uh, and I this is where <laughs> Adam Dowling down in last place. So Keith Dempsey already up into third. So this is what we want to see. Hederman is way out in front now. So it's Hederman out in front from Brian McManus and already Hederman up in the grass. So that won't do him any favours there. But this is Keith Dempsey. Let's ride on board with Keith Dempsey here and see. He is just absolutely flat out down in. As you go past the shell building there. So this is all about getting into the chicane. Look how much he can close up on the brakes here. Yeah, real danger. If you if you take that, that chicane too tight, you can clip it on the inside and that, that wall doesn't move as it does in real life. So that really yeah, can mess up your, uh, your lap. And if you get a wheel onto the curb on the outside then you're you're sideways before you know it have we lost leo so, i think we no, have no, but I'm it, still here. I'm, I'm in awe. you're just yeah. enjoying this leo eh? oh, yeah, so this is I this know, is I'm dempsey those, those onto the back of brian mcmanus already now this will be interesting to see brian mcmanus is really great at the defensive lines and backing people up way back as he's doing it there into the apex so let's see how keith manages this but all the time, Ronan holding his own out in front, and Jordan Kelly climbing up behind his. So this is going to be a cracker of a race, guys. Can we go back on board with Dempsey there for a sec? You, it was a great shot. You can really see how bumpy the track is as well. Look uh, how much the cars it, are moving it, around. Yeah, and it's even even in a straight line. Not that there's many straights on this particular track, but even in a straight line, on full power, it's very very difficult to keep these things pointing forwards. Yeah, they, they, there's a lot of camber changes on this track. In fact, uh, uh, on YouTube, have a look at Chris Harris when he raced one of the minis. You know, one of the um, Pemex K minis. He was saying that they, well, they're really taily, and he said actually, in certain turns, turns at Goodwood, you don't even need to uh, to use the steering wheel. The camber just lifts off. The back gets that loose, but the camber of the road yeah. turn the turn the car in for you. You know, but that just shows that uh, Goodwood is is a, a circuit for people that are well used to it. You know. Some great onboard, um, some great races from Chris Harris. He, uh, he, did, a, he did a fantastic video of uh, him in a lightweight E type as well. Um, and there was a great one. Have you seen the one in uh, who, who was it in the in the uh, oh. GT Forty in the West? Have you seen that one? Yeah, fantastic. So I listened to his podcast lately as well. Collecting cars, is it? It's really good. Yeah. Hederman's yeah, off yeah. into the grass, so that's the chance. He'll be kicking himself. So. That is Brian McManus up in the first place. Now Keith Dempsey has McManus, who's absolutely just pinning it through this section of down into Levant, down past the shell section. How they're keeping it straight through there, I have no idea. Off the curbs, these simulators, they don't like you going onto the curbs, Keith Sean is there, and then Kelly down into this. The I, oh, I think that was Jordan, Jordan, Kelly. Jordan Kelly, I was yeah. going to say Jordan Dempsey. It is indeed, yeah, but he's managed to gather it up. McMullen going well as well. Yeah, well let's go back out to the front. Nice Here we are. And ride it on board with Bonacam. God, they look like such a handful, these cars, don't they? They really do. Can we go uh, in bo or on board with uh, in, in the cockpit now? Yeah. You're very demanding, Rob. I know, aren't I? <laughs> Can we go to the sweet shop? Can we go to the toy shop? Can we go to the supermarket? <laughs> but this is brilliant because typically what we would have had to do was gather up everything. Leo would have had to stop at the centre coming through Cara to pick up all the bags of crisps <laughs> and, and, and the cookies yeah, and, and everything. Um, oh, myself no. and Rob would Ravita, sit in Mandela. Salad. <laughs> <laughs> like giddy kids waiting to see what Leo was about to bring. But now, sitting at home, I'm having a beer, feed up. This is... You would love to be out racing now, and you'd love to be able to do it at the level that these guys are doing it. Oh, I don't know. Would you want to be in one of those cars? Just look at this. Like, you want to hear the drivers chat earlier on? Just they come out of TCR cars last week, guys. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> I wanted to buy a three fifty five car. I just always wanted to have it. Two more. So this on to lap five. Sorry, oh, go ahead, Leo. Big, big. Uh, but a mate of mine has one. And he said, "You don't want one, Leo." 
It's like sitting on a wet cardboard box. The steering is vaguely related to wheels. The pedals don't do anything. You know, it's just like driving a dumper. And uh, a lot of old cars take a lot of time. And these cars are, are really well prepared, generally any of the Goodwood cars. But they're just completely different. They don't have good brakes. Got a lot of body roll. They're big, heavy cars. You know, you've got to turn way early, set the cars up, load up the bench and drive them through. And it's a little bit the same on these, listening to the drivers earlier on. And I think watching McManus there, he's really trying hard. You can see I think his tyres must be gone as well. <laughs> um, and Dempsey has him properly under pressure. So uh, can he soak it up or not? So I wonder. I think it's just a matter of time. Onto the grass there as well. Yeah, he's pulled a bit of a gap there. And oh, big arm. Back to Hedeman. You can see Hedeman there in the red um, SLR in uh, Keith Dempsey's rear view mirror and Jordan Kelly right behind him. And he's catching right up on the brakes there as well into uh, into the last but one corner. So, yeah, we could see a four way battle for the lead soon. And are we catching some back markers? Oh, no, that's a tie wheel. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's... Oh, down the inside. You're going to make it stick. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, good at the Bargy. And he's gone. Well, that's actually Managed good. to gather it up. How? I don't know. But that's Keith back down into four places. This is McManus now with four laps to go. Where's Keith? Seven seconds behind. Surely he can't make that up. Well, let's ride back on because there's a great racing going on behind with Ronan Hederman and Jordan Kelly here, two of the VRA Jordan. racers. Jordan's got past Hederman as well. Who's that off into the grass there? So this. Oh it must be the tyres going off this stage of the race. Yeah, so going back to um, Sterling Moss, guys. The, the, Credited with being the greatest driver to never win a championship. Um, where do you rank him in the top ten of all time, Leo? What's your take? Well, you know, the reason he didn't win a championship is because probably because he was uh, he stuck with British cars. Didn't he? When he could have gone to Mercedes, I could have gone to uh, to an Italian mark, maybe. You know, I mean, it's before my time, but just the stuff you've read about him today. It's absolutely incredible, and and everyone calls Fangio oh, a master. Oh, big spin here. for Kelly! He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, um, a great documentary about Fangio as well. If you haven't seen it on, uh, actually, you put me onto it. It was on uh, Netflix. Well, go on, sorry, yeah, quick cross. It's a uh, Fangio fight. He's been absolutely master in the wet, and Fangio acknowledged that Moss was was his main rival. So incredibly quick, you know, gave up after the massive. Now he survived. You look at the wreck. Came back, did a bit of British touring cars with Audi, didn't suit him. And then when Goodwood reopened and stuff like that, he was back doing demos. He came to, the, in 1989, he came to Ireland and raced and demoed the next day 120 at the Dundalk Street Races and also raced a witty car in the GT race, a historic uh, sort of Lotus 11 type car. Another big off there, Niall. That's it, that's McManus. He'll be kicking himself. He's had a horrid start to uh, his sim racing this year. Just everything not going his way. Um, and I'm sure at this stage that was just down to he was sliding the car around on the first five laps, keeping keep behind him. And I think he's just knackered out those tires in that car. Little tiny, tiny tires in these things. They're not lasting very long. So now we've got Hederman who has to try and keep Keith at bay behind him. And that is going to be no mean feat. So let's ride on board with Keith Dempsey here. Just coming back to your point there about the you know the greatest driver to never win a Formula uh, One World Championship. I think again, it's Chad Bowen down there on, and, and what you know made Mars appeal to him so much was this. Um, it was it was just a gentleman, um, and it was perhaps as Leo said, you know, he made some. He stuck with the the, the English cars, or whatever. Didn't go with the uh, the, the uh, Italians or whatever that could have won him the championship. But he also, um, I think, he gave away. Championship to um, oh no the yeah. so what's this going to do? So this with two laps to go. What have we got now? Sorry to cut across you, Rob, but that's Hederman taken to the grass, and I think he took Dempsey with him, or it could have been vice versa, either way. But Hederman somehow managed to stay out in front. But that's Jordan Kelly up behind. Key Dempsey back to third. Now he's got Mike Manus on the outside. Let's stick with these guys. And I thought this was going to be a cracking race, and it's turned out to be. So the reverse grid working out 
and that is Brian McManus pushed wide by Keith McManus. I'm not going to accept any uh, race incidents. They can they can do what they want in this one. I'm not even going to open the emails after this. Do you Here know when? No, no. Just for spectators' point of view, people that watch, uh, what what does that mean? What happens after the race? You now, is there a virtual appeal process or? If no, no. Them. So what what we actually do is we we save the race replay. So in effect, that's like getting everyone's GoPro footage. Um, which is really handy, Leo. And then we open up a an email. So there's 24 hours, and simply what they can put in is the race, the lap number, and the corner, and the drivers involved. Send in an incident, and we go through them and apply either race penalties. They have they have race licenses now, so they have a digital license that they have to have 12 points on that. Um, so for every incident that goes against the driver, they lose a point on their license. And then we've other disciplines that we've introduced, which is track re-entry. So if you come back onto the track and you cause someone else, or you, you collide with someone else or cause an incident, you start, uh, you miss qualifying in the next uh, round. Um, and if you've had more than three incidents in a particular race, you start, you miss qualifying the next round as well. So, so the drivers do get a chance to appeal that as well. But our last race with TCR, we had 35 incidents sent in, so it is going to be a bit wieldy at the moment. But it Brilliant. does. 35, yeah, so we're on to our last lap here, so you can see a lot of the stuff that we would have had in the early days with back markers and track etiquette, we've worked very hard to get it up to this level of driving, of course, the thing with sim racing is you're always pushing as hard as you can, there's never a minute that you're not, um, and it's all about accuracy and consistency on the steering wheel, so one mistake, and that could be a race round, as it's Dempsey up the inside, he's hardly going to take two for two, is he? Well, I was going to say, he's got him, but I don't think he has yet. So this is Jordan Kelly, current day V racer with Keith Dempsey behind him. And Jordan is more than able to suck up all this pressure. Great interview with uh, Jordan after our TCO race. I loved it. It was almost like listening back, a mix between Joey Dunlop and Kimi Raikkonen. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> as stoic as Kimi and as... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's uh, giving a little nudge there. He did. Just the straight. One of the best answers to an interview I've ever seen. How do you get these cars off the line? Uh, it's got launch control. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, how's Keith managed to do it? Oh, oh no! How, no. Does, <laughs> how does Keith manage to keep himself out of those situations as he Look, decides to take a pit face. stop and do a few <laughs> donuts for the fans? And that is the final lap. Who's going to win the race? It's Brian McManus <laughs> from Damien McMullen. We'll never hear the end of this from Damien McMullen. This will be all over social media at the end of the day. So that is coming into the chicane at the end. Jordan Kelly, uh, to answer your question, Leo, I'd say that would be he would be tapping away on his keyboard straight away, sending an instant for that. But Keith just has an uncanny knack for staying out of those type of big impacts. But that's the first time I've seen him. Um, and if that was a real world race, that would be scary, wouldn't it? Coming into the pit sideways like that. So it's Brian McMullen. He did, yeah. Right. So McManus back on top. That is going to be do him a world of good now as he comes into the next round on Wednesday. So this tomorrow we start. Uh, I was nearly going to let it slip there. They don't know what track is coming up this week. <laughs> but uh, he'll be delighted with that. And that'll be his win back up as he's shown off there with his drifting skills Damien McMullen in second from Keith Dempsey and Jordan Kelly will be kicking himself so there's your results for the race just a big thanks to all the drivers who took the time out tonight to uh, to help us just pay a bit of tribute to the late great Sterling Sir Sterling Moss um, I'll leave it up to Rob and Leo to sign us out but thanks everyone for joining in tonight I'm actually going to run down and do a bit of more race on this with the guys myself. That's the great thing about having your own sim at home. <laughs> yeah, I think they've all heard, everybody's heard enough from me. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave the final word to Leo. So, thanks, Leo. I think, thanks Rob, uh, we, we could have done a podcast, Rob, if he didn't stop us interrupting with his commentary there. <laughs> we were completely <laughs> ignoring the race there, being, being anorex. But that's uh, great stuff, McManus. Uh, McMullen, what a drive. And uh, Keith Dempsey spinning off. At least, I suppose, it, you know, we know Keith is the pace, but it gives someone else a go, doesn't it? Uh, great night's racing. Yeah. yeah, no, it was great. It's good to see. And um, it was just for a bit of fun. Um, obviously, no points or anything this evening, but uh, yeah, great to see. So I think we're back on Wednesday evening with the next round of the uh, TCR Championship. Um, so it'll be live on YouTube and live on Facebook. It usually kicks off around 8 o'clock. 
So do tune in and uh, we will leave it there. Okay, and Rob, if someone wants to get in touch with you or wants to start sim racing, what's the uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? Uh, you can give us a shout. So the website is uh, digitalmotorsports.com. Um, you get us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, oh, and you can email us at digital, no, what is it? Info at digital-motorsports.com. Okay, well, uh, I did say that motorsport.ie would supply a trophy for this race, but I think uh, after that, actually, we'll supply two. <laughs> maybe, uh, Rob, on, on this day, every year going forward, maybe we'll have a Sterling Moss uh, race. I think it'd be a cool thing to do. Oh, that yeah, would be, be a really cool thing, thing to do. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic, good stuff. Okay, great, great stuff, guys. Good. Enjoy that. Thanks, guys, yeah, for joining in. And uh, stay safe, mm. stay indoors, stay sim racing. <laughs> Easy plug. I'll yeah, sign it off. Cheers. <laughs> Enjoy right. yourselves.